Psalm 96 says, O sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord, bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. O worship the Lord and the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. The world also shall be established that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar in the fullness thereof. Let the field be joyful in all that is therein. Then, excuse me, <coughs> then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice before the Lord. For he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for the good singing tonight. Thank you for the good testimonies. Thank you for your delivering power. Thank you for different ways and different courses of events and different things you put in our lives and you put in our lives to bring us to you. God, thank you for opening our eyes to truth. And thank you for this week of revival. God, you helped us. We didn't deserve your help, but you helped us anyway. And God, we bless you. Now, Father, we pray you'd work with, uh, you bless them that are working with the children on the other side. I pray for those children. Lord, they're so precious. Lord, they're a gift from God to our church. And God, I pray you'd bless them. And Lord, you'd help them to grow in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And those that have reached the age of accountability and haven't gotten saved, I pray they'll get saved. And Lord, those that haven't reached the age of accountability, may the word of God be sown in their heart when they come to that point in their life where they can discern good and evil, I pray they trust Christ. And God, I certainly pray for the teens and those working with the teens. Those young people are under so much peer pressure. And God, I pray you'd undergird them and help them. And God, bless them abundantly. And Father, help us from the Word of God. Help me. You know my throat's a little scratchy tonight, so I need your help. And I pray you'd help these thy people. And God, help us to give you glory and honor. That is, do your name. Well, thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This psalm can be summed up in four different ways. It's a psalm of worship. Look in verse 1 and 2. It says, Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord. Bless His name. Look at verse 7. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory do His name. Bring an offering uh, and, to, and come into His courts. And I say worship is a verb. Worship is an action word. Worship is about giving back to God unreservedly because of what He's done in your life. It's about adoration. It's about Him having the supremacy of your life. When you truly worship Him, you come to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Uh, a lot of folks say they can worship on the lake. No, you can't. Because to worship, you've got to come into His courts. Uh, you've got to come to what He has established, uh, and you've got to lay it all down before Him. We see this as a psalm of worship. It's also a psalm of witness. Look again in verse number 2. It says... Uh, Show forth his salvation from day to day. Verse 3, declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among the people. 
For the Lord is great, greatly to pray, be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. Look in verse number 10. Uh, uh, say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. It's a psalm of worship, but it's also a psalm of witness. It's a psalm where you're to declare unto the idol worshipers and the lost and the wicked how great God is. Uh, but this psalm also declares the workings of God. Look at verse 11. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then uh, shall all the trees of the wood rejoice before the Lord. Can I say, uh, God created everything after its kind to bring glory to God. When the uh, birds sing, they bring glory to God. Uh, when uh, uh, all of nature does what it's been created to do, it glorifies God. Why do you think the trees grow straight up in the air? They're pointing to God. Everything about nature is to glorify God. And man was created to bring glory to God. So we see it deals with the workings of God. This psalm also deals with the weighing of judgment. Look at verse 10 again. The second heart, half of that says, The world also shall be established, that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. Look at verse 13. And he says, For he cometh for he cometh to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness, and the people with his truth. Hmm. There's a lot of mistruths today. But when Jesus comes, he's going to deal with people based on the truth. Your King James Bible has 66 books, over 1,100 chapters, uh, over 773,000 words, and man's going to be judged by every word uh, which proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Uh, you know why we preach and teach from the Bible? That's what you're going to be judged by. So we see all these things. And any one of them would be a great topic to look at tonight, but I'm interested in verses 7 and 8. Verses 7 and 8 was my aha moment when I was reading. It says, Give unto the Lord. Well, I understand that. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. I don't understand that. How can I give Him glory and strength? He is altogether glorious, and He has all power. Look in verse number 8. Give unto the Lord the glory to His name. I understand that. But I don't understand giving Him glory and strength. I just don't understand that. So as I began to look at that, God began to speak to my heart. And I want to preach with God's help on giving unto the Lord. Giving unto the Lord. And really, how can we give Him anything? He has it all. But He has given us an ability, and he has given us instruction on how to give unto God. See, when we do it the right way, Brother Donald, it is not only pleasing unto God, but it is actually fulfilling what God created us to do. When we don't do it, we're robbing God of the very glory that he deserves from our life, giving unto the Lord. Now again, what can we give unto the Lord? In verse number 7, where he says, Give unto the Lord glory and strength. I began to look at that. That word give means to ascribe to. To ascribe to. Well, that really cleared it up, didn't it? Well, what in the world does that mean, preacher? Well, to ascribe to means to assign the source of. Where did it come from? Well, can I say tonight? He's our source of salvation. Mm. I don't know about you, but you wouldn't be saved without Him. Mm. Hey, uh, 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 through His blood, we have the forgiveness of sins. Uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, we can be saved. Uh, the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord uh, shall be saved. Uh, we read the verse this morning in Acts 4.12, uh, Neither is there salvation in any other, uh, but there's none other name given under heaven whereby we must be saved. Uh, he is the source of our salvation. Uh, he paid for it. Uh, he's the one that pardons us from our sins, uh, and He's the one that's going to prepare a place for us. Uh, what a blessing uh, to know 
He's the source of our salvation. Uh, uh, we use wrong terminology. We'll say, I got saved. No, you didn't get anything. Uh, uh, he allowed you to be saved. Uh, and by the way, it's not your salvation. Uh, it's his salvation. Uh, uh, even David in Psalm 51 said, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Uh, what a blessing to be saved tonight, uh, to be rescued, uh, to be redeemed. Uh, from our sins. Uh, hey, our sins. Uh, I was dragging us off to hell. Uh, we were on the oxen block of sin. Uh, there were no takers. Uh, but Jesus came by uh, and he paid our sin debt uh, in his own precious blood. Uh, and he took those handwritings and ordinances contrary to us uh, and nailed them to his cross uh, and took them out of the way. Uh, what a blessing to be redeemed tonight. Uh, He's the source of our salvation. Uh, he's the source of our strength. Uh, uh, the Bible says in Acts 17, 28, uh, For in Him we live and move and have our being. Uh, 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 Brother Brian said, uh, He thanked God for His mercy every morning. Uh, you realize you couldn't get out of bed without the help of God. Uh, hey, He's the one that allows you to breathe His air. Uh, walk on His footstool. Uh, he is the source of our strength today. Uh, Without Him we can do nothing. But through and by Him there's nothing we can't do. What a blessing to know that. Uh, he's our source. Uh, we ascribe, we give glory and strength to Him uh, when we acknowledge these things that He is our source. Uh, the source of our salvation, the source of our strength. Do you know He's the source of our song? Mm -mm. Oh yeah, Exodus 15 too, The Lord is my strength and song. He's become my salvation. He's my God and I will prepare him a habitation. My Father's God and I will exalt him. Uh, he's the source of our song. Without him we don't have a song. Without him all we got is the same thing the world's got is a bunch of noise with words wrapped around it. Uh, uh, listen, I know I grew up in the 70's but at least most of the music back then had something to say. A lot of it was... Uh, protesting in Vietnam War but it had something to say this music today I, I don't listen to it very often but when I hear it I think what in the world is that mess huh uh, that's probably what the old people said about my generation of music too huh mm. but listen the beauty about the songs of God it's not about the melody or the music it's about the words and the words testify of his greatness he's the source of our song I thought about this he's the source of our security he neither slumbers or sleep he's always on guard uh, he is our security tonight uh, you know we, we talk about or we don't much but I know uh, the free willers and the missionary baptists they, they like to use the terminology once saved always saved but that's not bible terminology you know what Bible terminology is? The security of the believer. Hmm? It's not about me being saved for all eternity. It's about the Lord providing salvation for me for all of it. I'm secure in Him. As long as my high priest lives, I'm saved. And he's never going to die anymore. Huh? I have security in Him because I'm engraved in the palm of His hand. Uh, I'm in His hand. His hand's in the Father's hand. No man can pluck me out of the Father's hand. Even if I wanted to jump out, I couldn't because I'm a man. I'm secure in Christ. Mm -hmm. and by the way, most people use that terminology, once saved, always saved. They're really saying, I'm saved. I can live however I want to and get away with it. That's not Bible either. The Bible said, you're holy for I'm holy. Bible says, come ye out from among them and be a separate. Huh? We see, he's our security. Can I say this? He's our supply. Do hmm? you know everything you have God provided for you? Everything you have. He provided it for you. Huh? He's the God that owns the cattle on, all, on a thousand hills and all, owns all the golden tater in the hills. Are you listening? He owns it all. And he supplies our every need and many of our wants so I don't believe that well you haven't seen what's in my garage you haven't seen what's in Clint's garage well he don't have a garage anymore he's got a workout studio out there huh 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 
y'all look down at me. He's the one driving a Jag. Huh? He's not even British. Thad's the one that ought to have the Jag. Huh? Just give it to him, Clint. God will bless you for it, all right? But God supplies. He's the source of our supply. See, when you get to thinking that you're doing anything, you're robbing him of his glory. But when you recognize that everything you had came from the hand of God, uh, you're giving him strength and glory. Mm -hmm. Now say this, he's the source of our satisfaction. Mm -hmm. You know why people in this world give themselves to the pleasure of this world and they give themselves over and over and over to it and they're never satisfied because it will not sustain them. But Brother Brian said it in his testimony. He used to think he was having a good time. Then he got born again. Hmm? God changed his life. I remember before he used to say, I never would, I was, he was a tough guy. You talk to him, he was in bar fights with knives and all kinds of, it's amazing he's even alive. But he was a tough guy, but now he just cries all the time. Huh? Huh? Hey, what a, what a blessing. When, when you really get a, get a hold of what God's done for you, it, it'll, it'll soften you up, brother. Huh? But you're satisfied. You, he don't need to go look for another God. He's he done found the right one. Huh? He's satisfied. He's the source of that. But that word ascribe means more than the source of. That word ascribe also means to regard as belonging to. Hmm? I got to thinking about regarding as belonging to. What does that mean? That means he's my sovereign. Mm -mm. Now, I know a lot of Baptists get scared with that terminology. He is a sovereign God. He's Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. Uh, he knew the end from the beginning. He knows it all. Nothing, Brother Bobby said the other night, nothing has ever occurred unto God. Uh, 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 he knows it all. He knows the number of the hairs on your head. Not many for you, Brother Eddie. Uh, and he knows uh, uh, the thoughts, the intents of your heart. Uh, he knows all about you. He knows your down sinning, your uprising. Uh, he knows your yesterdays, your todays, and tomorrows. Uh, hey, the only thing, Brother Donald, he don't know. Uh, he don't know about your past sins because they've been washed in the blood uh, and they're gone. Uh, but he knows everything. Are you listening? Uh, he's a sovereign God. Uh, he is in control. Uh, beside him there is no other. Uh, his throne's in the sides of the north. Uh, hey, he is almighty God. Uh, he was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. He's the God on Calvary that looked ahead in time, saw you and I sitting here worshiping him tonight. He is a sovereign God. He took nothing and made everything. He needs nothing. He is all self-sufficient. He is sovereign, and He's my sovereign. Hmm? Say, what does that mean? He's my Lord. He's my King. He's Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Uh, but He's my Lord uh, and my King. Uh, 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 what a blessing to know Him in the free pardon of sins. Uh, can I say this? He's my stronghold. Oh, yes. Yeah. He's my fortress, my high tower. Uh, he is my stronghold. Uh, uh, I don't need anyone else to take care of me. He does a wonderful job. Are you listening? Uh, hey, I, I'm talking about his regarding as belonging to. Uh, he's my shepherd. What a blessing. Uh, he's not only the good shepherd, chief shepherd, and great shepherd. You hear me say it all the time. Uh, he's my shepherd. Uh, he's the shepherd that leads me beside the still waters. Uh, leads me to green pastures. Uh, when others are hunting somewhere uh, unpleasant to me, uh, he's already led me there. Uh, hey, uh, in the midst of turmoil, in the midst of trauma, in the midst of everything, uh, he'll find a patch of green pasture for you and I. Uh, I just to rest for a little while. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, brought it out not long ago in a message. Uh, when them 5,000 were fed, they were in a desert place. Uh, but he had them sit down in green grass. Uh, you don't get grass in a desert uh, unless the sovereign shepherd leads you there. Are you listening? Uh, hey, he's my shepherd tonight. Uh, he'll never lead you astray. Mm. When you follow yourself, you get in trouble. 
Uh, when you want to twist his ways, you'll get in trouble. But if you just follow him, it'll be all right. Uh, he's the one that leads us to a table in the presence of our enemies. And all they can do is watch us eat, Brother James. Hallelujah. Yeah. He's my shepherd. And I say this, he's my shield. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's my shield. Uh, what a blessing to know that nothing comes to me that doesn't come through his hand. Which means if it comes to me, he allowed it, and it'll be okay. Because he knows I'm equipped to handle it. I may not know that, but he knows I am. He knows what he's put in me. I don't know. I don't know any given day even what my name is, but he knows what he's put in me. And hey, if he allows it to come, he knows I can handle it. Hmm. Now, if you'd ask Job, Job, you out here offering up sacrifice? Because you love God and you shoo evil. And you even offer up sacrifice on behalf of your children, just perhaps if they'd forgotten to. Job, you're a righteous man. But Job, I got some news for you on out here in the future. God's going to take your ten children. He's going to take all your flocks, all your finances. He's going to send you three that you think are friends who are going to tell you how wicked you are for all this to fall on your lap. He's going to do all kinds of things, Job. You think you can handle that? Job said, nope. I can't handle all that. But all that befell Job. And Job said, naked I came to this world, naked I'm going out, blessed be the name of the Lord. And all that Job did not charge God foolishly. You know why? Because God knew Job. As a matter of fact, it was God that brought up Job to the devil. The devil knew Job, but was so blessed of God that he would never turn. And God said, Hast thou considered my... Hey, it was God's ideal. And I say, God knows what you can handle. God knows what you're made of. God knows how strong you really are, and he also knows how weak you really are. Uh, hey, can I say, he's our shield. And can I say this, he's our stone. He's the rock of ages. Huh? He is our, not only chief cornerstone that we're built upon, but he's our stone that we're anchored to. Now they tell me, I haven't spent a whole lot of time on the coast, but they tell me, in years gone by, they take them big old rocks and they put big old chains and they attach them to them, they attach uh, them ships to those uh, 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 chains attached to that rock, and when storms come, those ships might uh, uh, weigh all over the waters. But they wasn't going anywhere because they was attached to that stone. And I say I'm attached to him by the Holy Ghost. And I'm not going anywhere. No matter how troubling the water comes, no matter how dark the skies get, no matter how big the waves get, no matter what comes my way, I'm not going anywhere because I'm attached to him through the Holy Ghost. Are you listening? Hmm? He's my stone. Huh? We have an anchor within the veil. Hallelujah. Huh? Now listen, I said all that, say this. Giving, ascribing, means to recognize the source. And it also means to recognize that we belong to Him. And so, ascribing or giving glory just simply means when we recognize and convey these things, to others we are truly giving glory and strength to God it strengthens the name of Christ every time we tell others what he means to us on the other hand when we fail to it weakens the name of Christ because it gives glory to man and not him but when you tell others who you belong to, when you tell others the source of why you're still here, Miss Marcy, that God heard and answered prayer, and that God reached down and touched you, that's, that's giving glory and strength to his name. Are you listening? When others say, why do you go to church so much? And you say, because Jesus is my source. And by the way, I love him. And I can't get enough of him. That is giving glory and strength to him. Hmm? 
You see, my dear friends, he says, give him the glory due his name. He is worthy. He's great and greatly to be praised. Now, I got a real problem, Brother Phil. The people have no problem talking about the Bengals. Why, I don't know. They have no problem talking about the weather. Why, I don't know. They have no problem talking about any source of things. But they say they're saved and they got a problem talking about Jesus. They got a problem. Huh? He ought to be the easiest thing in the world to talk about. You know, grandparents talk about their grandkids, and, they get, and I guess they should. And as great as they are in your life, they shouldn't be greater than Jesus. Hmm. How come we don't give him the glory to his name? That ought to be in the forefront of all our minds, as great as he's been to me. If he wants me to give anything to him, glory and strength. These things do tell people he's my source. And I belong to him. Why don't you go out and crowd around? Because I belong to Jesus. Why don't you do this? Because Jesus is my source. Why don't you trust in this? Because I've already trusted in Jesus. It's not real difficult. It's just giving him what he rightly deserves out of our lives. So I challenge you to do this. Be biblical. We say we're Bible believers. We'll be Bible practicers. Give him the glory, do his name. Mm -mm. Just live the Bible, and you'll be amazed at how you'll impact other people's lives. I wonder, do we really give him glory? Do we really give him strength? Do we really honor him the way he deserves? God help us. Maybe tonight he spoke to your heart. You just want to tell him you're thankful that he's your source. Maybe tonight he spoke to your heart and you've not been what you should be. You ought to come and tell him you're sorry. Maybe tonight he spoke to your heart and told you somebody might be low in the service. Just go put your arms around them. Tell them you love them. Maybe you want to go tell somebody thank you. Maybe he spoke to you about something else. Well, that's what the invitation is for is to mind him. So some are already coming. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. If God spoke to your heart, you just mind God. Just give him the glory and the strength that is due to his name. Maybe he spoke to you about something totally different. Just mind God. Just be obedient. Because he gets glory when you are. While they're picking out a song and some are coming, let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for being so good to us. God, help us to be good back to you. Help us, Lord. Give us doors of opportunity to be able to give you glory and strength. To tell others you're our source and that we belong to you. Tell others the reason. Tell others why. It's all because of Jesus. And God, speak to hearts. Folks are in the altar. God, help them and bless them. God, there may be somebody here tonight unsaved that you've been dealing with them. Just like Brother Ron talked about in a year and a half. You dealt with them. You might be dealing with somebody about being saved. I pray they'd come. We'll take a Bible and show them how to be saved. Maybe there's somebody here you're dealing with about something else. God, I pray you'd help them be obedient. Maybe, Lord, you want to send somebody by somebody's way to be an encouragement. Lord, just have your will and way in this invitation. God, we'll thank you for what you do. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.